Hello, hello, thank you so much for coming to the Sashiko live streaming. This is Atsushi. And this is the live streaming where I talk about Sashiko while me stitching on the fabric. Now, let me check the audio first. Let me check the audio first. I think it is okay today. Yes. Ah. It's much better. I think it's clear today. So, today is the Thursday in the middle of the January, so we will have the um, gathering after this, online gathering about Sashiko. Uh, it's going to be offered by another organization called Pram Studio. If you have already signed up for that uh, mailing list, you should have received the link already. If you have not, if this is the first time for you to join, uh, please try to get a link or ticket. It's free um, on the givebetter.com slash Sashiko Gathering, which is on this description area. And besides that, I'll be talking and stitching until about 10.15 in my time, Eastern time. Um, Eastern, Euro Eastern East Coast? No, the, like New York time. I'm, I'm not in New York, but New York time. And then we will switch to the gathering after that. Okay, what else? I think that's about it. I hope that um, audio is good. I will talk about the ordinary today. Um, I don't know how it's gonna be like, but I will start stitching because that's the whole purpose of me doing that. And if you have any request for me to talk about, please let me know. I don't want to make it like a webinar or tutorials. So the question, I want the question to be more cultural or story related. And yes, what else? I was gonna prepare something, but I was so focused on the audio today. I think audio is good. <laughs> I would, I'm sorry for the last time. So let me know if the audio is not really good. And I will start stitching them. Right? Do, do, do. Oh. One of the comments I received on the previous Instagram post about the ordinary, uh, I, you know, I baked bread and I shared a photo of the bread and Sashiko um, skin. It was surprisingly uh, many comments on that. And I think it's really... I have been repeating the same story um, in a different way, and I think the yesterday's way to explain that was pretty good. Hitting, getting the point. One of the things I kind of find it interesting was that I received several comments about the gender equality. Gender equality. So in our household, my wife is the bread winner. And I am a kind of stay-at-home father type. And to be honest, to be honest, it was quite difficult for me to um, adjust it. Because I was raised in a quite old-fashioned family that a man should provide. So it was kind of difficult for me to adjust first. But at the same time, I thought that was kind of my issue. I thought that the U.S. is more advanced in terms of that. Japan, unfortunately, is a little um, still old, outdated, old-fashioned. They are still not catching up to the you know trend for that. It's not a trend; it's the shift. I would say it's a shift. And for me and for my wife, I think gender equality is not something we talk often anymore. So when I received the comment that uh, what I'm doing to my daughter is showing that those gender equalities and that's more important than Sashiko, or, you know, I understand that comment and I just found it interesting that people in the U.S. also say those things. It might be a wrong presumption, but 
I thought that the US was more advanced in terms of this. But at the same time, advanced can be a quite uh, interesting word, what risky word. Since we value the individualism in the United States, there may be, or well, probably will be, more people who are old-fashioned or who who does not believe in the gender equalities um, and they take it as their personal choice instead of the collective action so what i see what we see right now is probably just a collective action of mm, what is supposed to be said in the society instead of what they really really feel so i it makes sense if I think that deep. If I if I keep imagining why I received that question, it kind of makes sense. At the same time, it was kind of interesting because I was not expecting to. It was out of blue. It, I did not expect expect to receive that kind of comment, which was not bad. Which is good actually. It's not like you know bad comment or <laughs> aggressive comment. It was more like natural, but gender equality is also important perspective to talk about Sashiko. And it's going to be a long story, and I really have to prepare for this talk because it's kind of sensitive issues. You know, when we talk about gender equalities, um, if I do not prepare, it's, it can be. I don't want to hurt anybody by saying anything stupid. So I would like to make sure that I can prepare that, but baseline is that Sashiko is and was for women. I'm not saying men cannot do Sashiko stitching, but it was more for women. And I think there are reasons for that, and there are stories why women were stitching. And that lead me, that lead to the situation that I'm experiencing right now. And but, you know, long story short, it was a stitching form in the ordinary. And that's something I really, really do not want to change. Um, it can be changed because, I'm sorry, I don't want it to be forgotten. That's probably what it is. It's not. It can be different. It can be changed because we have many, many choices. We don't have to stitch for survival anymore. But I don't want the ordinary perspective as something forgotten or almost left behind. So ordinary is important. I want you to apply Sashiko to your ordinary. And that explains that 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 explains a lot because when <laughs> That explains a lot why I was not, um, I was not, and I'm not aggressively teaching. Um, thanks to many people, I received a lot of uh, teaching opportunities, but maximum is six or seven workshops per year, like every two year, two months. Every two months is probably the maximum. That 2022, I did. Hurry, just a second, okay. One, two. Yeah, probably six or seven. I have to <laughs> double check that. Um, but I tried to not to put so many workshops because, again, teaching itself can be somewhat extraordinary for me, and I would like to make sure that I can be in the ordinary perspective. And right now um, because after so many experience in teaching i know what is expected and what i can do like i can i will i do go over the expectation go above the expectation so trust me it's, it's gonna be something like you do not probably like for the first time so it's really interesting to see those differences, but for me it's ordinary, right? It's very ordinary, and as the result, 
I really did not know what to teach. It's like for those who stitch from the childhood, threading the needle is not really a, like some skill, correct? Like threading the needle. You probably wouldn't be proud of yourself by being able to thread the needles if you see your parents and mother or grandmother, this is the gender thing, but um, if your parents are stitching and if you, if you saw them doing that, you would probably have tried it. And if you have tried that in the childhood, threading the needle can be quite ordinary things to do. But for the other, for some other people who has not done stitching, the thread threading the needle itself can be the obstacle, uh, big challenge. And again, it's not uh, good or bad, or I'm not looking down, hmm? looking them down. S simply, they did not have a chance to experience that. It's the same as me. I don't do golf. I don't know how to golf. It's quite rare for the Japanese business person who used to be business person who does not play golf. But I did not have opportunity to practice at all. As the result, I don't really do at all. <laughs> I don't think I can even swing. Um, you know, we the opportunity is the start line to make it ordinary, and when the family has the ordinary, that ordinary becomes your ordinary. <laughs> For me, Sashiko was that ordinary, and the reading needle is not really the issue, no matter what kind of thread we're using it. Um, as our sashiko thread is a little thicker and needles are thin, thinner, so some people have a really difficult time to thread the needles. Um, therefore, I recommend to use the threader. Some people may struggle with even using the threader, and I will, I do teach how to th threading easier in the class I teach, either online or in person, I mentioned a few techniques to make the um, threading easier. But again, there's nothing wrong with using a threader. And there are many interesting ways to thread it too. And I, I will probably share today one way to do that, which I do not share. I did not share in the workshop. And I plan, I don't plan to teach that as well. It's a little bit too extreme. But if one cannot thread the needle with the threader, this is probably the way to do that. And I will talk about that a little bit later on. But like those orderly is the foundation of the culture. Orderly is something defines who we are. So as the result, I do not want that ordinary to be something different. And that's the whole purpose of me speaking up. So, that logic is quite simple. But it is completely different from what is introduced right now because, not completely, but I see the roman, roman, ra, romantizing, <laughs> romanticized version of sashiko because that makes money that makes people that gets attention when the one person gets attention they can create more monies profit you know there will be something benefit out of it unfortunately that's the trend right now and again 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 i'm not saying it's wrong to do uh <laughs> wrong to do something outside of ordinary I'm just saying that it cannot be forgotten or it cannot be left behind. Am I talking about the same stories? Ever? I hope I have not talked about this for quite a few months at least. 
So she called the old Ollie is a very, very, very important topic for me. That explains a lot of comments that I say, like Sashiko is not the art, and that statement, Sashiko is not the art, can be explained by that ordinary, which I'm not gonna do right now because it's gonna be complete repetition and it's gonna take another 30 minutes or so, but it's really interesting to see how things are taken in the different culture and if we do not like i could have let it slip and nothing may have happened to the culture i don't know we may have some people may just give up move on to the next trend and sashiko may have been the same untouched I don't know how it's gonna be. It is, although the big trend, um, there's always a possibility to go back to the original f form. But at the same time, there's also, of course, the possibility of not going back. And I couldn't just let the uh, luck to take over this. So this live streaming, that this live streaming is all about that, and also my Instagram is all about that. But I believe once you are listening to those stories while practicing Sashiko for a few months, few years, you probably will be able to stitch like we do. Um, Maiko-san after... Uh, Maiko-san who is gonna offer the live stream, the live stream, online gathering after this, uh, wrote the Instagram post about is Sashiko difficult? And my answer is Sashiko is not difficult. But that answer is not probably someone's answer. My answer is not somebody's answer. Sashiko is easy for me and that I can say that because I did not go through the difficulties. I don't remember that. I don't remember the time I couldn't thread. I could thread the needles when I was, you know, very, very little. I don't even remember when exactly. It's like, when did you start working? Probably your parents oh, take a note about that. But. I'm starting to fully understand what you mean by orderly. Thank you. See, it requires a lot of explanation, right? I mean, I probably could have jumped to the bread explanation. At the same time, I think I really have to explain the stories around it. It's... I hope it does not sound arrogant, but when I... I am realizing that in order to pass... talk about the cultural perspective of different uh, sashiko, let's say, sashiko and the, in, over the different culture, the first thing they have to, the people who are trying to learn, is that put their values or expectation aside. I'm not saying they should, like I sometimes use the word uninstall it, but you don't even have to uninstall that, you just have to stop that program. They have to just stop the program running behind the back, behind the back, on the back. So. It's simply that, but <clears throat> one, once, uh, one, <laughs> when one decided to learn something new while letting their ordinary or their expectation running, then it's gonna be a problem. That's the pretty much all the problem I got in the last four, five years. Like biggest. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, biggest difference is that in the U.S., asking a question is a good thing, right? I, many, many kids are encouraged to ask questions, even if you are kind of uh, interrupting teachers or somebody's story, asking a question can be a good thing because that's the sign of 
interest you are interested in something so you are asking the question and that's better than being quiet in the discussion or lecture right now probably that's the same in japan they're changing a little bit but a few decades ago asking a question to somebody was kind of rude especially if those per people are experienced than you are asking a question can be quite um, risky move because we consider that the person who asked the question is taking somebody's time which can be more valuable than person who is asking the question in that topic like more like teacher sensei and, uh, sensei and also deshi shoto deshi uh, teacher and henchman kind of uh, apprentice so i'm not trained to ask a question when i have some unclear point I wait until the end. I wait until the end of the lecture, and if they have the um, open hour, office hours, we go there. If we if they don't have an office hour, we just wait <laughs> until we don't. Tr I did not make appointment, and you know that was very difficult for me to get a grade in the U.S., which can be <coughs> adjusted quite easily because you know we can change that when we understand the difference but when people come to sashiko they don't know the difference right they don't know the difference and they expect it sashiko to be the same as their ordinary same as their expectation so they casually naturally ask question with respect and they think, purely think, that that's a good thing to do. That's a good thing, because you're asking the question, which means the sign of respect and interest. So, they naturally think, I hope they are naturally thinking that it's a good thing. And, you know, they are polite, they're very polite. <laughs> like, please, could you, would you, thank you. And I try to not to answer those questions because of this story. But some people may find that that I'm being mean or I'm ignoring that comments. It's not about the contents of the question itself, which can be the contents of the question. I'm sorry. If the contents of the question is really new, I would probably answer that. But if the question answer of the question is somewhere i already explained somewhere i would i don't reply to those unless i'm extremely uh, sleepy happy hungry uh, some extreme conditions i mean i like sometimes people are like tell me that or you know nothing like hello or please or just say, teach me that, or why that. Uh, those are not really even the... <laughs> it's not even on the category of discussion. Because I believe that that's one thing similar across the culture. Uh, even regardless of difference, there are manners, there are a way to talk to somebody else especially when we don't know each other so those are kind of my way to teach them or share the story with them so they do not have to go through the same mistake in japan for that i think i'm kind of kind <laughs> generous for that because i will open the door again when they come back I will not reject somebody who wished to come and I will not chase somebody who decided to leave. That's my kind of, you know, core statement. Um, but if one is trying to be friend or trying to learn something in Japan from very, very old-fashioned Japanese person, people, if they close the door once, 
that door will not open almost forever to your children's or grandchildren's level. So we have to be careful. At the same time, you know, you can ignore that. Not you. They they will, they can ignore that. Because, you know, if they know that the door will not be open, then they won't probably keep knocking it. So... If they are really, really, really willing to go to learn what Sashiko is, um, to the extent of teaching, teaching Sashiko, the whole picture of Sashiko, they have to come to Japan. They have to talk to somebody who are do, who is doing Sashiko, right? I mean, <laughs> Googling is not going to make them master. They have to go and do. Uh, that can be a big, big barrier if they don't understand this. So, summary-wise, Ordinal is very important, and ordinary can be very different in each culture. So when we do something, when we learn something different from some different culture, one thing we have to do is to put our expectation, our values, right next to your values, and then try to accept, try to adjust the difference to you. Oh. <laughs> Um, this is my personal experience, but the first year of the college, freshman, my roommate was from, uh, Uganda? Rwanda? I think he was from Uganda. And, you know, the first roommate, I did not speak English that well. Um, but we tried to spend time together, like playing the basketball together, or, you know, you know, in those times. And we tried to make an appointment, like, you know, let's let's meet up together at 2 o'clock, like 2 p.m. after the class in front of the gym. He never, he never comes on time. In fact, a few hours of delay was always. And I did not know that that would be the different culture. For him, being late is normal, right? That's the ordinary. For me, being punctual is the ordinary. And as we did not know each other, the difference each other, and since we were in Japan, and since we were in the U.S. where the third mutual culture is existing, it was very difficult for us, both of us, to be friends because of that. We kept kind of fighting, and we stopped talking to each other. But that was because of the cultural difference. If he knew that the Japanese people were more punctual, and if I knew that his culture does not require to be punctual, and one more, the U.S. culture can be uh, open to either cu either culture, so it's up to us. More individual, individual, ah, more in based on the ind individualism. So it it is happening the same thing in Sashiko too. The biggest difference is that Sashiko is the form of Japanese. Uh, stitchery, and I think that's something we all agree. If there is somebody who is saying like Sashiko is not a Japanese word, please let me know. That's a completely different uh, starting point. So we, I, all of my explanation doesn't make sense to him or to her if he or they are saying that. Uh, but as long as Sashiko is the Japanese word, sorry, not as long as when we talk when we stitch based on the fact that Sashiko is the Japanese word um, we we expect the stitches to adjust themselves to the our expectation it can take time it can take time there's no uh, it's okay to make mistakes but it is very important to just you know put that in your mind that there might be a lot of difference and if 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 you worry about it right now like those people who listen to my live streaming or instagram they worry they care they respect as the result they come to my live streaming they try to read my long post 
if you worry about it, don't worry about it. It's that simple.、Uh, I mean, of course, it can be more deeper, <laughs> but I would like to simplify it as much as I can.、Um, if you worry about it, don't worry about it too much because you're trying to learn. If you think, if you start saying like you know everything about Japanese culture, then please be worrying about that because if they start saying I know everything about Sashiko, well, wait there, wait there. I don't know the whole picture of Sashiko. Why, how can you, can they be so sure about that? Aloha from Hawaii, aloha. On time is important, it is, it is important again, but. In some culture, probably at least in that, in his culture, on time was not the priority. He, what was he saying? He was saying, like, I had a, my own plan for myself, so that was more important than meeting you. Was it his culture or his family personality? I have to go back to my college time to discuss that, but again, that's the, that's the whole point. We cannot, we shouldn't. Uh, push what is、uh, priority or what is important when we are learning something, something different from us. Again, I 100% agree with you that being on time is extremely important.、Uh, we are the you know, people in Japan who apologize for being late by two minutes or even a minute when the blood train from Tokyo to Kyoto. Got delayed by that. Again, that's a that's a pretty scary thing. s Come to think about it, it's like two hour or two hour and a half of ride. Of course, the time fluctuates, but they apologize if the train g e t delayed by a few minutes. And it's, it's out of mind. I thought that was normal when I was in Japan, but nah. That is crazy. <laughs> For that, I'm not Japanese probably anymore. That's not really good. That's not really, 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 really good. That's really bad. <sighs> in our culture, again, in Japanese culture, being on time is very important, but coming to there, being there five minutes in advance to that. Or、well, 10 minutes, Jupu m i k o o Gofu m i k o o We call that we have to act 10 minutes in advance. I don't have it anymore. I don't know. I don't do that anymore. Because nobody's there, gonna be there. If I go there, if I come to the appointment 10 minutes earlier, nobody will be there. So being on time is very important, but I do not follow the. Those expectations in Japan that I should be there 10 minutes earlier. So I really have to, <laughs> I really have to readjust it when I go there in Japan next spring. Some people probably, well, in some you know, culture, even within Japanese culture, those、uh, Japanese mafia, Yakuza people, they expect. Them to be there 30 minutes in advance, especially if you are kind of you know a lower ranked. You're <laughs> very hard to be early when you're caring for a child, too. That's a completely different story, Sharon. I completely understand if somebody is doing the child, I mean, you know, child related. It's impossible to plan if you have a child. Back then, back then in Japan, where Sashiko was undeveloped, child had to listen to the parents no matter what. I think there was not a freedom or individualistic in their kids, I think. <laughs> so, even my age, like 30 years ago, 40 years ago, they did not have that much. Freedom as they have today. They had a freedom within their capacity when they're playing, but when they come into the house, 
they are let me do, let me rephrase that so right now as a parent i try to treat my daughter as the same person my best i try to my best like i try to treat her as as if she is 39 years old lady like we have equal rights we have you know there's no difference for that i mean she has to listen to us because we're the parents uh, because we have a little more experience but we try to not to say just because <laughs> like why do i have to go to sleep well, and then I, I try to explain we try to explain you probably try to explain why it is important to go to sleep instead of saying just because i say so <laughs> 40 years ago that was just because so right now the parents have a lots of responsibility and adjustment because they cannot just force the kids to follow what the parents decide at least i don't and i probably cannot because of my our family agreement i plan to not anyway but it takes more time to uh, be punctual but still, still, I think Japanese, in the Japanese culture, taking care of your own kids comes before. No. Keeping the promise comes before taking care of my own child. So, not bothering others is really, really, really important concept. Important perspective in our culture. If you are going to trouble somebody else, bother, interrupt, make them feel stressed. Those are a big taboo. In it's not written, it's not said, it's not. Nobody's gonna point it out, but that's quite bad manner. So that's gonna be the foundation of that. What was I talking? Yeah, so that those are those like ordinary is a good word to describe describe what we do ordinarily, our common sense. But that ordinary can be very different from each other, and when it comes to the cultural topic, like we don't know if it's ordinary or not in different culture. And in my account, I try to explain as many ordinary as possible so that we can adjust each other. But again, <laughs> this is the second time I say, if you worry about what you did or what you will do in the future, don't worry about it. Those people who worry about is not going to be the one who will cause issues. <laughs> I know, I, like this, this is very... I rarely say it's 100% true, but it is 100% true. I'm sorry, this is 100% true statement. <laughs> I have many theories, like many, many theories that I, I might follow to make myself feel easier. For example, uh, I received a comment on Instagram saying like, uh, how can I find the link to my online class or workshop where there's a link already? <laughs> So they don't read what I wrote. And there's a link on my profile. If they Google my name, it's going to be the first thing, at least for the on the first page. And if you go to the, my website, Cycle Stitches, there's tons of information to get to the workshop or in-person online, uh, no, in -person workshop or online class. So those who are asking the question directly or on the comments, they don't take the class, even if I tell them the link and that's not a hundred percent true it's not always it's not hundred percent so but they most likely not to take so there are those theories that we kind of follow like if I expect them to hmm no, not expect those are the theories that I follow to protect my emotional labor. 
damage from emotional labor. But one thing I can say for sure is that if you worry about it, you don't. You're not the one who has to worry about it. You're not the one who I am trying to talk to. You're actually complete opposite side of that. <laughs> what did you think or feel when Gwen Stephanie said she was Japanese? Not respectful in my mind. Um, I didn't like my my wife got super pissed. <laughs> I mean, of you know, she brought it up that topic, saying like, "This is exactly what you're fighting about. This is the cultural appropriation. This is something you know she's taking." over your cultures you know we had a pretty good discussion about it but honestly speaking honest like very honest it did not bother my feeling much i don't know why exactly i will explain that little by little but it did not really bother me at least not to the level i write on the instagram which I, <laughs> like, there, there are many, many kind of triggers that I get really agitated, or even I, when I, like, painful. Interestingly, and kind of weirdly, it did not bother me. And that's the another reason that it is very, very, very difficult to talk about this Sashiko and um, not a cultural appropriation, but more as well Sashiko and cultural appropriation for that matter, which I have completely different idea of cultural appropriation in the main trend. Like I, I think that anybody should be able to, or anybody can, should be able to, and. I want them to enjoy Sashiko regardless. Under one condition though, when they acknowledge the stories behind the world. But not many Japanese people don't even think that level. They can say, well, you know, if the people are enjoying it, that's good. And from now, it's gonna be a bit bit sensitive very sensitive it's honest but sensitive topic sensitive conversation sensitive sensitive description the japanese i shouldn't really generalize that it's a huge subject the japanese but many japanese i know they look west they look very much west they want to be like west they we appreciate we're kind of admire or cherish or even like long long for to be the western and unfortunately this is very shameful but especially when i was a kid child, when i was a child west means white and when white people admit what we do we may be happy as if we were doing something that like we got acknowledged and we got accepted or we got admitted um, there is a word for that i completely forgot about it but like we feel the person like let's say that some people like, <laughs> there's a white people told me that i like atushi you should be happy that we are trying we're practicing sashiko again there was a person who actually wrote that you have to be happy you should be happy that we're practicing sashiko and that phrase itself is very upsetting if you hear, hear that but there are gonna be some japanese who take it as is <laughs> so they might be happy because the white people are practicing sashiko here, white means west, okay? So... 
some people who practice sashiko may be happy that sashiko is very popular in the western culture and there's a big difference between if i can find one big difference between me and those people who might appreciate those th those comments are uh, how serious they are in this culture i am very serious in sashiko as a result i cannot let that happen the same happened to gwen i don't know her i don't really like i, I am not knowledgeable enough to be upset with what she said and you know it goes with the lookism too like she looks good she has a good looking right i i, I don't know i don't remember much but you know lookism is always the things that like the better looking is you know better acceptance but <laughs> We're very messed up culture as well, and when those people make that that kind of comment, like you know, some some of us will be happy as if we are part of their community. Here, a Japanese who practice sashiko is now accepted to the white community who do stitch. It's not the actual equation, but if they think like that in their mind, she or he will have completely different opinion from what I say. But that, that could happen too. So, it is quite difficult. And I, you know, they, they, I really have to try to pace myself why it did not bother me, yet I get really bothered by those, you know, ignorant comment on my face, on my Instagram. The one big explanation is that it is because Sashiko is my life and I don't want it to be so light, lightly treated. At the same time, I might, I should be probably upset about that. Well, but emotion is not something we can control that easily. Uh, it's not vindictive. The word I was looking for is the, I know it in Japanese, it's called meiyo hakujin, meiyo, meiyo, like honored. Um, I learned this word from the book Nice Racism by D'Angelo. Uh, I'll come up with that. It's not the word, it's not like a verbal, it's not like a vocabulary, it's probably the word she come up with, came up with. But the action or word itself is actually attacking or like very uh, culturally inappropriate, but the person who received that comment actually get happy because of the power balance. He. <laughs> I am learning. I'm really, 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 <laughs> I'm really proud of myself for that. In 2019, the beginning of 2019, I did not know the word cultural appropriation. I still don't actually know much, but um, like somebody say like, that's cultural appropriation. You know, you got to be careful. You got to, you should, you know, you should, be, you can be upset. My reaction is what the heck cultural appropriation is. Like nobody can appropriate the culture. I I just got, I was trying to explain that I was not overreacting because that's what I do. But she was saying like, well, that's called cultural appropriation, gaslighting, gaslighting, not a gaslighting, gaslighting, I think, uh, the microaggression, like th those, those words are really everywhere. And I did not know any of those because my English... <laughs> My English is all about stitching or being a stay-at-home father or business, which I studied in the school, which means pretty much nothing, or drinking, and pretty much all of my English is coming from the office, as I keep saying. Or movie, Netflix. Anyway. So, I read several books. I've been reading books, um, learning those 
description from many many like influential accounts as well on the Facebook not on Facebook on Instagram as well so uh, but at the same time I don't want to be the, an activist some people consider me an activist but I do not want to be those uh, but I want to be honest I don't want to fake it because if I fake it I have to remember it like today I am sharing my honest feeling of that I that Aunt Gwen said she was Japanese did not bother me much. If I lie that it bothers me a lot, I have to keep that lie alive by remembering it. Since I'm saying honest things, I don't have to remember that because it did not really bother me at all. And if I'm going to face to my feeling why it did not bother me, then I will remember it again. But if I completely forget about it today and then somebody asks me like two weeks from now, I can be just honest and, and nothing will be contradicting. Oh, sorry. Just a second. <laughs> oh, I couldn't mute. I'm sorry. I was going to mute the mic, uh, but I couldn't make it. Oops. Sorry. There's a mute button, but I couldn't reach there. It's probably better than seeing some. Well, there's no liquid on the fabric, but. Anyway. <laughs> now, the whole point is after you learn, after you're hearing this live streaming, if you worry about it, don't worry about it. You're not the one who is, who, who, who I need to speak to, who I need to consider or think about. They don't listen though. They don't listen. I know that they don't listen. They probably like consider me, um, they cannot deny it because <laughs> Be because oh, no, of course they cannot deny what I say because that's what it is I guess so instead of denying it well no they don't deny what I say because denying requires discussion and I don't think they want to get into the discussion about that <laughs> I don't want to get into discussion because in, in, in English, I would love to have a discussion in Japanese, but uh, it takes a long time for me to read the English, so. So they don't want to get into the discussion, so they don't deny what I say. So I think they will just ignore my existence. And that's that's what it is right now, right? Like, you, don't, you just don't read the information that you don't like. We we have been experienced that in COVID a lot. There are two extreme informations. Both of them are right information on the Google. You know, COVID exists, mask, vaccination. Those are all, they are right answers for each one of us. But it's not like right to universally. It's all about perspective right now. And unfortunately, Sashiko has become like that, too. So, uh, oops. Perspective is really... It's a quite big issue, I think. Okay, uh, I forgot about the <laughs> threading. Sorry, I mentioned that in the beginning. I will talk about it after this much thread are gone. So if you are, you know, if you have any other topic for me to cover, please let me know. I wonder, I wonder that she thinks she is going to gain by making a statement like that. I don't know. Yeah, that's a really good question that's a very good way to think about it 
I don't know what she gets by saying that. I mean, she likes Japan for sure. I think that's something. Like, she was in Japan and she made a song about some Japanese city's name. I think it's true that she likes Japan and I think she said it with the respect to the Japanese people when we take her statement in a positive way. And I think some Japanese will take that as a positive way to do that. Just it's not the best way to describe the passion in today's society because there are some people might be in the pain. <laughs> I thought she was trying to express her enjoyment. Yes, so that's probably what she was meaning it. But at the same time, So, like, for example, my daughter is going to probably have to face this issue. She is Japanese, right? She is Japanese. She's, look, she's 100% Japanese. She is a mixed, she's a dual. She is mixed with uh, Jewish blood and Japanese blood. But f as the pa on the paper, she is 100% Japanese. She's a Japanese citizen. So she can be categorized as the Japanese but her identity as Japanese is third, or even fourth, for that matter. But if she likes Japan at some point, she will probably have to face to the identity issues. And she may have to go through those um, issues, like, let's say, she might want to say that she is Japanese, but because she does not speak Japanese as a language, some might say that, well, it's not a... You are not Japanese because you don't speak Japanese. It can, it can be... The like, definition of being Japanese can be a lot different. It happened when the tennis player Naomi-san, Osaka-san, declared that she choose to the Japanese citizenship to be in the game. I did not follow the news that much, but that I think that became a pretty big deal. Deal. The pretty big issue. And there are millions of people like my daughter who are in the pain by searching for that one face that I'm Japanese or I'm, you know, identity issues. And the problems of her statement is that she is missing the imagination of those people who may be in the pain by saying that. I hope it makes sense. I hope it makes sense. So, because of that, it became a little bit of, hmm, that, that's my understanding, that's, that's my guess, it's not an, even not an understanding, that's my imagination to the lack of imagination. So, it, 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 it is like a very idealistic world. It is very idealistic to say this one, but I do not want to hurt anybody when I share Sashiko. And it's very idealistic. I do not want to leave anybody behind when I share Sashiko. Right? Those are two statements I really want to stick with. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to leave anybody behind. But that anybody is those who care about the Sashiko as a Japanese culture. In another word, I might have to sometimes attack indirectly. I don't like attacking somebody directly, so I don't pick a name. 
I don't, I don't, like, it's probably easy to pick up name, but I know who they are, so it's probably easy to list the name, but I don't, because that's too direct. So I'll speak up, so that they, oh, I hope they change their mind, but those, anybody is those who spend a lot of time in Sashiko, who chose Sashiko as part of their life. Ideally, those shokunin, shokunin is the word for the Japanese artisans who kind of committed their life into one craft, art, um, artisanship. Unfortunately, not unfortunately, pain, it is unfortunately actually, unfortunately, the trend in, the sashiko trend in English right now is leaving a lot of people behind. Many, many Japanese people are going to be left behind because only because they do not understand English. And I don't think that's fair. And that's that's about it. <laughs> if, if I can come to if I come back to the story like that, it's that simple. But yeah, Gwen's Conversation is a very good topic to carry over to the gathering. I might be completely out of order, like spacing out, but you can talk to each other. But that, that was my perspective. And that's why it is very difficult. That is why I have to keep sharing the stories, so that So they want to look west. Let's say they want to look west, right? I cannot force their neck to look east or south or north. Because they want to look west, they look west, no matter what. Even if I say that the right destination is the south, they look west. Only time we can change how which direction they're looking at is the time they want to change the direction to look at. Nobody can change that. So if they want, if they don't, if one person does not want to listen to what I say, they don't. No matter how much I talk, try to convince. So I'm not even trying to convince or change their mind. It's not gonna happen unless they really feel like mm, probably I gotta change it. And in order to do it, there's a kind of strategy on that. <laughs> I won't be different because I have not been different last 20 years, right? I was doing Sashiko when Sashiko was not in trend. My family was doing Sashiko when Sashiko was not even in trend or even not famous. So I'll be doing Sashiko regardless 20 years from now. Because I'm okay, I'm happy just by stitching. But those people who get profit by just doing Sashiko will move on to the next topic, next theme, next categories when they cannot make profit enough. And I'm kind of trying to encourage them to move on to the next, te next topic so that people who really, really care can rebuild it. At the same time, they will not move on until they know that they will have nothing to squeeze it out. So by sharing the stories, I hope those people who care will be a little bit, like, little by little, little by little, but slowly more, like I, the more people, the more people realize or try to listen to what I say, I think the slower the trend will get, and the slow trend is what I want. It does not have to be the fast. But in order to make profit, it has to be fast. Oi, oi. <laughs> I've, I've been doing this for the last five years, so I know what I'm doing right now. And Unlike Sashiko, I need a little bit of strategy, like, to place, to go. I need a destination to start doing something. And 
I think they will move on. Like those people will move on. Because what's the point of doing that? It's <laughs> interesting, but those people who enjoy stitching do not really they don't ignore what I say. It's it's really interesting, but those who stitch with the joy, they I don't think they ignore what I I mean there are people who disagree with me. We agreed to disagree. <clears throat> and I'm I'm not trying to change their mind. But we are in common that we like sashiko stitching. So no matter how much we disagree, we can be kind of friend. I've been done that. I don't think I can be friend with anybody who likes sashiko without stitching. And you may think like, nah, there's not going to be people like that. And I thought so. I thought like, you know, then there's not going to be anybody who likes Sashiko without stitching. Because of the trend, there are people like that right now, probably. Not a probably. They don't stitch. If they stitch, I think we can be really, really good friends. Because we have the common thing in stitching. But because they don't stitch, yet they say they like Sashiko, there's going to be a little small crack. That's the beginning. The more the more I understand, then the, those crack gets bigger and bigger, and then they will ignore what I say, and then it's still bothering me more. Wow, today's conversation is a little too personal. I hope I did not make anybody uncomfortable. Like, you know, many people, probably some people expect me to talk something very positive or funny or you know I, I want to be funny if I can um, or you know cheering but this is quite what it is right now but at the same time I'm not really pessimistic about the future I'm quite hopeful um, the trend will end at some point and when the trend is end they will move on and when they move on, if there's no Sashiko artists and so-called are left, then the Sashiko's culture will be gone. But I met so many rising Sashiko, the future Sashiko artisans the last five years. So I'm not really, really worried about it. It's just a matter of timings and also if I, if I can be there. Like, I don't know how many years I have left. I mean, I will have more years. I don't know why I keep saying that. I don't know how many is left, but I don't know. The, those are the little things I have in my mind. And this is, as I promised, I will talk about how to thread <laughs> the needle in the extreme way. So first, there's a way to thread the needle. Like if you can thread the needles, completely, disre the, uh, completely disregard this section, like ignore this section. And... If you can thread it, that's okay. If you can thread, completely ignore it. And if you can, if you know how to use threader, if you know how to use threader, then please use the threader. Um, I have YouTube videos on how to use the threader, I guess. So you can learn how to use this threader on the YouTube videos. So if you can use the threader, please use the threader. So what I'm saying is, um, if you can thread, don't worry about it. If you, what the heck is my hair is like that? If you, are they? Why is it so standing? If you know how to use the threader, don't worry about using the threader, there's nothing wrong. And the third case is that you cannot even use the threader. Like, you cannot 
thread the threader case. Sashiko thread is kind of unique, and the worst case scenario, if you do not handle well, it could split a lot. Like, significantly split? It will, it will split. The Sashiko thread has to split. That's, that's kind of a key. If the Sashiko thread does not split, that's not really doing Sashiko thread. I mean, it has to split in a unique way, so it's not, I'm not saying any splitting stitch, sorry, any splitted stitches, not stitches. I'm not saying any splitting threads are good for Sashiko, but because of the um, character of Sashiko thread that we carry, it's gonna split at some point. So this is the very, very ultimate way to do that. One, you tape, you use a kind of scotch tape, you tape it like that, and then second thing is tape it, tape it like this. Do you see that? Tape it like that. You can cut at the edge. And third thing is like to cut it diagonally a little bit, so you can thread it probably easily. But this is very ultimate way to do that because you have to cut the thread here before you start stitching. You cannot start stitching with this um, part where there is tape. Of course you can use this one with a threader if you cannot use the threader. But again, you have to cut this uh, tape part off to pull the threader out. So that's the ultimate way to do it i hope that it, you know they can practice to make it better but threading is not really the key core of sashiko you like, i may have to ask somebody to thread when i don't when i lose vision i probably have to ask i can probably stitch without closing my eyes but i don't think i can thread with closing my eyes so i uh, it's not really, it's not a sad thing or it's not a shameful thing to do, just you have to know the way to do it. And using the thread is probably the easiest solution, but if you have a time, difficult time to thread the threader, this might be the solution for that as well. Okay, uh, I will move to the gathering. I do not host those Zoom meetings anymore. Maiko-san from the Plum Studio offer those meetings so if you have not received the links please contact her or come to the um, <laughs> givebutter.com there's a there's a link to get a ticket to join and i will send you the link at 10 30 right before i start we start to those who got a ticket so i hope to see you there and if you could uh if you like this story, please click the uh, good button. Because of what I talk, some people really don't like my live streaming, and I get sometimes very big negative reviews. And in order to keep the this channel healthy, your help would be very much appreciated. Good button will help me out. Um, lastly, I will just read out Leah's comments, so I may be able to use that for the next one. They often trend where people try to be someone or something they are not in order to perform, uh, perhaps elevate themselves for some reasons. Yes, so that I call it for profit or benefit, which I will um, elaborate next time. Many people used to say they were related to the Native American group, even though they were not. I used to have a relative that claimed to be Cherokee. They were not. That's interesting. So they were sort of the benefit by saying that, right? So I think the, we, we say those things, we represent ourselves, we kind of exaggerate the stories to get what we want. And it's not illegal, it's not a wrong thing to do, it's just not honest. <laughs> I don't consider it even ethical because I don't think, I don't, I do not consider it as unethical because, you know, we all do that at some level. 
it's just not all on you know it's not honestly enough to teach something if you were just enjoying sashiko go ahead don't worry about it but if you're teaching that's a little bit different story i pers i personally feel that claiming to be something i'm not is disrespect disrespectful to in this case to native american yes so that that's like <laughs> leah did such a great job to summarize what the cultural appropriation can be so if we can acknowledge that this issue will be done this this issue will be completely completely solved if we all understand in my understanding the cultural appropriation in sashiko will be very much solved when we understand this because i say that every i want everybody to enjoy sashiko only with only one condition that they will try to listen to the stories or they try to learn the stories behind it so that we don't have to leave anybody behind anybody who has been stitching in japan only in japanese who may not consider themselves as such artisans yet we can you know try to involve them that's what i'm trying to do in japanese too okay <laughs> so much talking i will move to the i will close this live session live ah, i will close this live streaming I will see you in 10 minutes or so. Bye bye. Uh, actually, good night for those who will not join.